I guess rage and panic and PTSD dealt with correctly make for very happy plants. Ooh, look at that. I just planted it in there, a little tiny seed. Look at this. So here we've got some beautiful sweet bell red peppers. Not bell, um, the other ones. They're not red yet, but they will go red after a while. Here's a cheeky little sunflower. See, look, that is the same size as my finger. And that <laughs> is not the same size as my finger, unless I just keep moving my finger as I move up the plant. Isn't that pretty? <gasps> and of course, when it finishes in the autumn, hello, darling. Um, all the new sunflower seeds are going to be in there and they can be harvested out of the center. The... Is that gonna not be blurry? Maybe I need to clean the lens. Oh, there we go, lovely, lovely. And then they can come all the way over here into this little, not here, take that away. Look at this. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it incredible to think that inside that tiny little thing is all the genetic material needed to make that. Isn't that just rather an extraordinary thing? My ivy's doing terribly well. It's like a sort of triffid coming out into the room now. <laughs> um, and that started off down as just little spriglet on the floor. And, um, it's very happy. I, I got excited about the sunflower, so I planted some more. There's a little one down there, and there's another little one down there, and then there's this one here. So um, in about a month, I would say, there'll be three enormous extra sunflowers keeping this one company, which will probably be coming to the end of her old lady phase by that point. Anyway, while all that's going on, you've got these lovely people playing in the park they're hugging each other, they're not wearing any masks, they obviously know nothing about COVID. That's the strange thing about Dawlish. People in the park, you can't see now because the sun's gone in and lots of people are, well, you can see some people over there. Basically, people in the park, they don't wear masks. People in the street, oh, the street's full of COVID. The park hasn't got no COVID in it at all. People in the park are cuddling, they're sitting on, on rugs and blankets and things. Very strange. Now, let's go on a little tour. Oh, yes, look, I'm having a coffee. That's the first, I, uh, I ate a red letter, <laughs> yum, yum. Now that, all the seeds in there, you see, are the children of that plant there. Um, there's some basil. Um, can't remember what that one is that's in the same pot as the sunflower, but that snapped off um, something in the living room and I rerouted it because it was so big. I was like, oh no, I broke it and I rerouted it. Now this, there's two little sad ones down here. When they get too heavy and too old, they break, they sort of bend. And I think I'm gonna snip them with scissors at the bend point there. But don't fret, don't get upset about the death because while those are dying, you see, you know, it is terribly sad. Thank you for your service, lovely leaf. Look what's happening in here. <gasps> A new one is coming out, the daughter of this one. <gasps> And so when she grows up, and she's got a sister coming as well, just uh, here, this is going to be like that in about two days. They are so fast. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that wonderful? Getting lots of lovely sunlight. And in front, you'll be pleased to know that the lemon tree lives. Look, hallelujah, the lemon tree, hurrah. Even this little one down here has got, got little shoots. Now, let us pray for the one at the back, because this little sad, 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 sad little, little girl down here, she's not doing so well. She's actually wobbly like a tooth in the soil. I can't pull her out, but she is wobbling, which means that her root system is very, very weak down there. So if we all pray and she gets even one tiny little leaf or one sign of growth coming out of there, she will live. Everyone else is doing terribly well down here. Look at that, look at that. And then this little, little, uh, well, I say little. Look, she's shot up. She's decided to do a whole new branch, towering over everybody else. Now you're just showing off, aren't you, darling? Um, 
It appears that the um, caterpillars are no more. I decaterpillared the entire lemon tree successfully. Um, this I'm so excited about down here. What I might do is snip. I know, I don't, you don't want to hear me say that, do you, darling? I'm going to snip you, probably, at the top there to stop that growing too tall and just shooting above everybody else and becoming a bit ridiculous. But, um, you know, some people might say, well, no, let nature run its course. But, uh, you know, if you have one tree in this pot towering over the others with all its foliage and leaves it sh overshadows the others and they can't grow any leaves so if you put answers in the comments about what you think about that should I get involved and do a little snip up there so that these are uh, younger branches down here and especially this lovely one down here have a chance of growing without getting completely overshadowed or should I just leave it and continue to make videos and photographs what do you think anything else to show you uh, a well-made bed. Not particularly interesting. That's my meditation area over there. Um, yes, double mirrors and candle holders in front of them. Very, very powerful, I might add. And in my wardrobe behind me, there's another mirror. Hello, yes, that's right. Thin Simon making a video. Look at my amazing new beard. DJ has done a fine job. Look at that. This amazing bit in the middle where there is no beard. Um... Lots more exercises today. Um, anything else to show you? Oh, I do love my flat. Yes, in other news, the crazy strangulator woman from downstairs, I don't even want to mention her by name because I'm trying to keep the PTSD at bay, has uh, gone off straight after having the police assault all her front doors last Monday morning at 3am. And she's fucked off to some other place, um, presumably with... Um, um, well, people who are putting her up who she hasn't pissed off. I mean, I don't know how long that'll last because eventually she tries to turn everybody into a minion. Um, she doesn't do friends. She does service people. Proper sociopath. Not embarrassed to say it online. If you've met her, you'll know it's true. Um, in the living room... Now, don't worry, these are not dirty clothes. This is a pile of clothes that I don't fit into anymore, but I really like them a lot. So I'm going online to see if I can locate small versions of any of them. Um, not as easy as I thought. I think it might be the, um, I don't know what it is. Um, Asperger's, autism. I'm on, I'm on some sort of spectrum. Um, I like clothes that I've had before. So I want to get replacements. Now, a little bit of, little bit of gentle, gentle pulling there. You can remove these little ones here that we don't. Uh, come along. There we are. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So it's daily maintenance, daily maintenance. Now this one down here, do you remember that one I showed you in the kitchen? Can you see down there? There's a little, a little accidental stub down there. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can show you a bit better. Really need some, um, can't really get the, um, down there, in there, let me point. You can see just there, you can't really, I need to zoom back and maybe you can see. Basically, one of these little speakers up here fell off. I knocked it off by mistake about, I don't know, eight months ago. And it fell, crushed this poor little piece down here. And the top, one of these lovely whole things, snapped off. So I rushed it into the kitchen like a good medic should. That is my laundry basket. Sorry about that. Look, though, you see, that lives in here in this very nifty little cupboard behind the door. How pretty. Look, I've got lights and darks. And then it shuts away. No one's the wiser that it even lives there. There we are. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, yes, I put that into the kitchen, rooted it in water, and now it's making it all its whole, oh, a whole own tree there. <gasps> I also made some prawn crackers just now. I'm not a fan of deep frying, but occasionally <clears throat> one must. So there's the oil cooling down. And there's my lovely prawn crackers. I'm going to be um, writing several scenes of the... Uh, of the film I'm writing this afternoon, that's going terribly well. I've got so many blueprints in my brain, it started to leak out of my nostrils and ears and things. So um, I have decided to um, put it all on paper, which is what one's probably supposed to do. Um, I've written a few scenes already. Um, it's getting very good. I can't share any of it, though. It's strictly confidential. Um, what else to show you? Yes, one more thing. So this beast of a plant up here, which is doing very well now, but was really sick last year. You can see there was a sickness that started killing all the leaves. Um, I think I was not well mentally and emotionally. Weirdly enough, I don't feel particularly well mentally and emotionally now, but um, my plants are doing incredibly well. So I'm not sure about that. But anyway, 
um, I took these great big pots down, and because um, it's quite difficult, you see, you've got the you know the stairs go down. So I've got I bu- I've got this I bought this special beautiful um, um, pine ladder, so that when you get onto the landing, you can climb the ladder to get to the boiler and to water the peace lilies, of which there are three. <clears throat> Notice no lilies yet. Um, I clearly am not at peace. That's how you can tell when you are. If your peace lilies actually get lilies on them. You are not freaking the fuck out. And if they aren't, it might mean that your downstairs neighbour recently fucking strangled you in your fucking hallway. Excuse me. Ooh. Yes. I had an amazing chat with my uh, PTSD, grief and trauma counsellor yesterday. And she has advised some very useful things to dig, dig deep and to actually get the rage that is now manifesting out of my system Physically, it's um, I'm not going to tell you too much about that at the moment, but it's exercise based, shall we say. And as it turns out, it's uh, not about uh, anything that's happened particularly recently. It's deeper than that. So so I am suffering PTSD from uh, 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 trauma that's uh, deeply embedded in me and being strangled has helped to bring that to the surface. However, it has made me temporarily crazy. Um, I don't want to say that. Uh, 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 let me let me caveat that just in case the uh, the crazy policeman comes back and uh, decides to use his powers to um, enact the mental health act that the police have got now. I don't think he will. I think he's rather worried about uh, professional standards coming for his badge. Uh, so he won't be troubling me, I would imagine. Thank you, Mark. Uh, anyway, as I was doing these two plants, I snapped a great big branch you can't really see, but there's a place at the back. You can see that little stub there, right at the back. Just there. Where there was this lovely... And it, it snapped. I'm like, oh, no. So just like the other one I've showed you in the kitchen, I brought this huge thing down with four big leaves on it, all joined down to one stem, and um, and rooted it. it I, I was spraying the leaves every day with love and passion and glory and things. And... Um, Lo and behold, I then planted it back in here. Now, that's one of the leaves of it. That is the second leaf of it. Then there's this one here. And then there's this one. Now, yesterday, I noticed this. What do you think of them apples? Look at that. What is that? What is that? Yes. It's rooted and it's rooted well enough that new growth is now coming out where it was supposed to when it was part of that other plant. So... Very exciting. Um, What appeared to be dead is alive. What was dormant is waking up. And what was asleep is rising like a phoenix from the fucking ashes of pissed offness. This is um, (laughs) a lesson, I think, for me. And maybe you, if you are also experiencing anything like this at the moment, a lesson in balance. A lesson in, ah, yes, this is a good example of balance. This was made for me by my beautiful friend, Danny. She lives in Germany now, but she lived in Dawlish for a while. Balance is not something you find, it's something you create. And she got stones from the beach. Now let's see if we can get in any focus at all there. Oh, look at that. She got stones from the beach and a piece of stick, and she made it into the most beautiful birthday picture for me. Now, you can't touch the writing that she's written on the glass because it would smudge completely, Um, so I haven't. I've kept it very clean, and if I need to clean the glass, I go sort of around the edges. But that, just having that close by at all times, really does help. (laughs) Did you see what you just just, I just lost then. (gasps) Lost my balance. Now, the last thing I want to show you, got 13 minutes. The other thing I've been struggling not to lose, guess what that is? This is a very interesting story. This is my sacred wolf. This was given to me by a dear ex-friend of mine who uh, recently cut me off completely um, because people come into your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime, and hers was a season. Anyway, a couple of years ago, three years ago, quite soon after I moved into Dawlish, she gave me this wolf. And I decided that the wolf would look after an aspect of me that I was always losing and um, recently have lost almost completely. Um, Now, this goes back to my London days when I was um, doing all sorts of terrible things to myself that were making my brain not not well. 
um, you know, involving sex and drugs, and the laptop that I was using, and some coconut oil. Anyway, there was one particular day when the coconut oil had run out, uh, the uh, laptop was getting really, really um, coconutty, and I was... In a rage, perhaps, in a rage. I mean, this is all going back to the PTSD and then to the various things that have, have triggered it over the years. Anyway, I think I, I bashed the laptop or maybe I slammed the lid down and one key from the keyboard just flew off, flew off the laptop. And I'm like, oh, fuck. There, there's this laptop, there's these key, this greasy keyboard. And there's me looking for this key on the ground. And I couldn't find it. I'm like, oh, fuck, what key have I lost? What bloody key is it? And it was like I was talking to God, I think. What have I lost now, God? And then I found it on the floor. See it here? Let's have a look. What had I lost? No joke. I'd lost control. Yes. So I kept this key. The laptop died, not that day, but very soon afterwards. Um, things do tend to die if you don't look after them properly. Um, and uh, when uh, the lady who gave me this wolf gave me this wolf, I knew that the key from the old laptop, from that old part of my life, was supposed to live between his paws. So this wolf helps me not lose control. Um, incense burner. Um, me and my sister in a past life, maybe. With a very nice feather going on there. Uh, yeah, so don't lose control. Um, well... In, in order to find balance, you have to lose control. That's the whole point, right? <laughs> very shamanic, very exciting. Um, so really, it's just onwards and upwards, really. Um, out of the madness and into sanity. I am not there yet. I am not even fucking close. Um, let's just look at my lovely plants. Out the window. I did get some beautiful flowers. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can. Uh, these are all the flowers that bees like. I got some bring back the bees flowers, masses and masses of them, and I just planted them all here, and hopefully there's going to be just tons of them. We've got my uh, strawberries here, and then over in the other window, more of those. Strawberries and tomatoes and lots and lots of flowers. So they'll be growing. Lots tomatoes there, lovely. Just starting to grow. Hopefully they'll grow up there, and they'll, I'll have tomatoes going in this marvellous arch all the way over and down the other side. Now, anybody was under the impression, this is my shrine, look at this, look at the power there, Boo! I can feel that going right into my chakra line. Boah! And this lovely painting my sister did for me of the sun, it was a mixture of me and the sun from one of her, one of her oracle cards. It wasn't oracle, it wasn't tarot. I can't remember which pack it is. If you've got the pack, you'll know. But this is an impression of the sun that I think she was looking at a picture of me and a picture of the sun when she made this. And if you notice, his eyes are starting to fill with tears. Sometimes I sit and I meditate and I look at that and I just try and breathe and be with it. And then every now and again, this voice goes, and then I have to just calm down again. Um, it's getting less, but um, I am planning to go into the woods with a very tough, masculine, macho friend, also barber, also clothing designer, also brother, with a punching bag, hang it from a tree, beat the shit out of it, whilst imagining all the people who've ever judged me, screwed me over, hurt me, damaged me and broken me, right the way back to the beginning where all that childhood and teenage rage has been living, buried under the marijuana, masturbation and pornography. Wow, what a journey. So I'm going to dig really deep, clean all of those things out. I had an amazing EFT session yesterday with Dickon Walker. Thank you, Dickon. We tapped into, <laughs> literally, quite a lot of that. And um, yeah, today there has actually been less rage, a little. Um, and certainly some control over noticing when it arrives. And rather than just shouting expletives, and especially the C word, very, very loudly... Um, like in a sort of out of completely out of control way. It's not fun, you know. I, I'll be honest. It's not fun. You know, bursting into tears spontaneously in the butcher's shop is not fun. Um, not trusting your mental health to get you up the street to the co-op is not fun. I'm making a fun video because I have to. I have to make a fun video because. If we don't laugh, we'll cry. Nothing wrong with crying, but 
tempered with laughter, I understand it's uh, an easier tonic to swallow to heal oneself. Um, I have been working with people with addiction for several years, as well as working through my own addiction as well. I have become an incredibly good coach, working people through trauma, through arrested development, and through all sorts of other things which could be regarded as mental health issues or spiritual blockage issues. And I have a very unique way of bringing people through all sorts of things. Um, there are certain clients and uh, even friends I'm working with at the moment who can testify to that. This is a very interesting piece. This is Italian glass on a lovely plinth, I think probably made of plaster of Paris, I'm not sure, all from the antique shop. Amazing Jeremy Selleck, sold loads of things to me over the years that I've lived here, and it's just beautiful. And then it's amazing, look at this chandelier. He sent me a picture of this and said, what do you think of the chandelier, Si? In your, in your living room. <sighs> and I was like, um, well, uh, that's interesting. Uh, it's right in your hallway. I... I didn't know I was a chandelier kind of man. And then my friend Will, amazing William, he climbed up into the attic there, scurried along like a mouse, drilled a brand new hole for me. That was where the old lamp was. You see, that just comes down a yucky little horrible lamp straight over the top of the banister. There's no feng shui to it at all. I know this is a rented property, but I treated it like my home and made it beautiful. I mean, I even had extra wiring put in so I could have a plug socket put down the wall there outside the bathroom so I could charge my electric toothbrush in here rather than in the kitchen or something because there's no plug sockets in there and there are no plug sockets in the hallway. This is why I love my home. I have treated it so well. I get the carpets cleaned twice a year. I've got stunning art on the walls. <sighs> These are that's a beautiful lamp, by the way, that one. Actually, that's the last thing I'll show you guys. Right, let's go down here. Look at that. Look at this 60s glass, just stunning. All sort of lead piping. I don't think it's lead. I can't remember what it is. Mm. Look at that. And my Japanese, Japanese crockery. I'm scared to touch it. It's so beautiful. It's very, very thin bone china from Japan. Teacups, pots. I'll never use it. It just looks beautiful. And I got these uh, lights to put inside. I can't remember if they're charged. Let's have a look, shall we? Yes. Why would one have anti crockery? Really, just so one can take the remote control and press the on button. <laughs> now that's odd. Warm white, please, for all of you. Uh, where is that? Warm white. Thank you. There we are. See, change. Isn't that beautiful? And if you want the cool white, oh, all four of them change at the same time. Isn't that fun? Up we, come on, come on. There we go. No, that top one is being very naughty. There we go. So this is, this is, this is, this is a real good introduction to my home. And then this lovely rocket lamp now just glowing over there, making the whole TV sofa area just rather marvellous and golden. And another chandelier in here. Yes, actually a chandelier with these beautiful little lamps in there. And I covered the bottoms of the bulbs, not the bulbs, but the bases of the bulbs in this lovely um, terracotta coloured paper that I found to match the bloody curtains. I mean, I never thought I'd be a house proud guy like this. And I don't think it's because I'm gay. I think it's because this is the first time I ever experienced a place that I had any control over that I could call home. Right now, that's what the bases of the lamps look like when I haven't covered them in anything. You see, they're not very nice. Now that's been 18 months, a tiny little snagging job where I want to get some dark red, that colour, and also the colour, isn't that amazing? And the colour of the curtains. I want to get some red paper, that colour, sort of dark maroony colour. I haven't quite found the one I want yet. And when I do, I'm just going to cut strips and then wrap those strips around this, uh, this heavy, hard plastic here so that um, they match. Um, there's Amma. Hello, Ma. Om Shanti 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 Om Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Aho, it is so Blessed be, 
This is why I love my flat. This is why my flat is my home. And this is why my home is my game. And this is why anyone who enters my game is subject to the rules of my game. Gemma Charles, you put your hands around my throat and you started to squeeze the life out of me while you looked into my eyes. I do not see you as human anymore. I see you as a goblin-filled liability. And I pray for your exit or removal from this property. And I shall not speak of this to anybody except you lot. Certainly not Devon Rose, because they only want to hear about buildings and maintenance. Fair enough, by the way. Yes, in their defence... In the defence of the rental agency who does not want to hear anything from me about Gemma, one of the reasons that they don't want to hear is because over the last six months I have gone into their offices in various different states of emotional turmoil and trauma, completely not self-managing, and they just wanted the data. They didn't want to hear the story. And I couldn't do it because I did not emotionally compose myself. I was stressed, I was upset, and I was desperately seeking, you know, whatever, retribution, justice, um, closure. And um, I was also trying to protect her to a degree by trying to say everything that I needed to say without ever saying that she was a drug dealer, because there was this sort of bizarre loyalty in me, which left me the day she turned around to me and said, if you talk to the police out of turn about me, you won't live through the weekend. Less than two weeks later, she was actually strangling me. And then that night, the police were smashing down her front doors because of a claim she'd made that there was somebody in her property, according to her CCTV cameras, which had been tripped. Now, there wasn't anyone in there. There was just a television on. And that night, after the police had finished smashing down her doors, she almost attacked me a second time. And the only reason she didn't was because her friend Daniel pulled her off, dragged it into a car and took her away. And I haven't seen her since. Um, I have still been singing first thing in the mornings to offset the PTSD because I do still wake up with panic and singing um, is the only thing that is keeping me calm with the music, with the yoga. My body is transforming. I'm doing an hour and a half now to two hours of HIIT workout, press ups, sit ups and yoga all mixed together in a lovely <sighs> floor based. I call it the kneel crouch method because the whole thing can be done with kneeling and crouching. And when my body is just completely exotic and hot like a big sexy daddy tank i will take all my clothes off except my pants for you and we can all do the neil crouch method together and everyone can look like this i don't know maybe you have to be in trauma in order to get this level of energy but um yeah going into the woods with dj i hope will help and beating up a um a punch bag anyway lots of love to everybody this is my home this is why i love my home this is why i do not want to leave this is why i'm staying there's my desk as my water egg. So when I get thirsty, my parents bought me this as a birthday and Christmas present. Hello. Mm. <gasps> yes, I was eating ice cream earlier, but do not fret. It's Booja Booja, which is quite expensive, but it does not have any dairy in it. It's basically... Um, almond and cashew cream that they make and then just fill it with chocolate and yum-yums. Amazing. Mm. Right, I'm going to go now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Loads of love. Bye.